Appreciate you hitting the button. Welcome to the How to Hustle podcast with Hype. Follow me on Instagram and Twitter at I am Hype. That's H Y M P E. It's Hype. It's not Hype. I'm not geeked up. Appreciate you in the button. Welcome to the How to Hustle podcast with Hype. This is episode 146. You follow me on Instagram and Twitter at I am Hype. It's H Y M P E. It's Hype. It's not Hype. I'm not geeked up. I don't need to introduce this guy again. You should see he's back in the building. Go ahead and throw your shit out there. I already know your favorite coach's favorite coach, your favorite fat freckle man, the big dog himself. Boom! From Life B Life and Podcast. And you know he going to say it. I ain't even got to say it. Shots out to my man, Nutmeg Nah is back in the building, y'all. We back, baby. I'm saying, what was the John Stephen Fats? And I like that one. And Stephen Fats and Fat Barnes, because I went on the smoke. You know I mean, you saying? Copy I that. want all be, the smoke. You be Stephen, I'll be Matt today. <laughs> Stay less. <last. laughs> all right. Uh, this is episode 146. Y'all already know I'm doing the journey. My man, nah, ain't too far behind. Y'all already here. If you're here, you know that this week, this is the last week to build up to the Pod Link live show, August the 4th. Tickets are on sale now. We got a couple left, but we got room for you and your cousins. You should bring him or and her too. You get with for us, sure. you get the physical tickets because we got those are on deck. You know what I'm saying? The physicals right, right there. There you go. Keep it on. And we also have the link in the Eventbrite in case you can't get a physical. When you get to the door, tickets will be 25 at the door. So you get your joints now for a dub or you can get them for 25 at the door. However you want to play that situation. Uh, y'all also make sure you stop by the vendor table. We have several vendors that will be in the building. Shouts out to Keisha with the cakes. Because Keisha is always on the uh, situation. Always the so first one to come through. Yes. Make sure y'all stop at all of the tables, though, with all of the vendors. And make sure that y'all uh, come out and support the situation. We're looking to have a great time, not a good time. And we're looking to make this a thing that we do quarterly. So we want you to be in there. Give us all your critiques. What do you think about the show? What do you like? What do you don't like? We know we ain't batting a thousand. Shit ain't perfect. But uh, we're going to make sure you have a good time. Pod Link sure. Live Show. Though. Hit the link in any of our bios and uh, get your tickets now. Uh, we're going to talk a little bit more about that, though, as we get through the episode. But this is uh, episode 146. As y'all know, when I plagiarize, I like to give people their love and their shout outs. So the other night I'm on, I'm on Life Be Life in uh, YouTube channel. Where would they be able to subscribe to the channel right now? Man, you can find the channel everywhere. All right. Find us on Instagram at Life Be Life and find us on Facebook at Life Be Life. Man. Find us on YouTube at Life Be Life. And you feel me? Copy that. So there I was at Life Be Life on the YouTube channel watching my man do his thing. I think the, the girl name was Tommy that was on yeah, there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We had Tommy and we had Sonny on there. Yep. So you threw the question out there to her when she was talking about a depression situation. And she's mm-hmm. like, it's a difficult conversation to have with your spouse about I'm battling depression as to why we ain't had sex in X amount of time or what have you. Right. So that got me to go, well, boom. What's the most difficult conversation that you can have in your marital situation or your long-term relationship, whatever you is that you have going on, whoever's mm-hmm. listening. So, nah, talk to me. And shouts out to Mish, too. Mish was supposed to have been on facts. that day. Uh, but, you know, Mish, we're going to hold you down. Facts, facts, facts. Yeah, the situation going on. But as I always say, life be life. You feel me? So, yeah. shout out to Big Mish. Um, the I, I had to really think about this question, man, because it's tough as hell. Um, We can give I a think, couple. You know what I'm saying? I think, I think, I, I think, I'm going to go top three. Top three toughest conversations to have with your partner. One, that it's over. You know what I'm saying? Ooh, like, nigga. I That's my that nigga that, right there. <laughs> I think that it's, you know, having that conversation that it's over and there's nothing they could do about it. You feel me? I think that is one of the toughest conversations to have because, you know, it, it's one thing where you're saying you feel like it could be over, but when you tell them it's over and ain't no coming back, man, listen, especially you love that person trying to deal with their emotions and their response. That's a tough one. It's a lot of people who are still in a marriage or relationship because nobody knows how to say it's over. It been if we've been together That's... like 25, 35 years, just because we married don't mean we have to stay married. But after 35 mm. years, it's like you don't even know how to live without this person because you have been living with this person 
if, if you go from like 20 to 55, you don't remember really like too much of life without them. And the adjustment to like, like I always give Dan this one. Shouts out to Big Dan from BCG. Where do I live yeah, if we if we like we ain't together? Where am I living? Right. Who gets the big Who gets the big screen? Who's taking the bed? Like what? Just everything is in upheaval. So like I can imagine, like like I said, you know, some people that have been in a relationship another 15, 20 years just because it's like you don't even know where to begin to say that. You don't know what it looks like after you have that conversation. What does that do to the kids or the grandkids or whatever your situation might be? So, yeah, mm-hmm. I really damn. I had a good one, but damn it, you didn't. You might have trumped me. <laughs> um, yeah, you see, I'm pretty sure you still got going. I'm pretty sure you still got it on you. My joint was um, that you don't like their parenting style. Mm, that is tough. Because how do you tell your wife? Or your husband, like you was a great boyfriend, but you're a bad parent. Like you're not a good dad, or you're not a good mom. Like you're not attentive Ooh. enough. You're not present enough. You don't teach them anything. You talk to them the wrong way. Like I don't like the way that you even move with them. Like I was watching something yesterday, and the girl has her first baby, and she's in a meeting at work, and she's like, "The baby don't know what we're saying. Look, shit, fuck. He doesn't know what any of this is." And it's like, yeah, but that ain't cool to do with the baby. Like. Right. They don't know how to do anything. So anything that you give them is what they're going to feed off. That's what they're going to pick up on. Regardless to if they're three months, if you keep doing this, then guess what they're going to first do? Like, you know what I'm saying? Right. So even though, like, it's a bit extreme to go there, but it's it's a bad, it's a bad, uh, the bad cycle. It's a bad habits to create for a kid. If you're always saying, like, they six, they don't know, they seven, they don't know. You remember what it... You love your grandma who you hadn't seen since she was five and you 74, but you still remember what it's, the cookie smelled like when she used to mm-hmm. make it. Don't you think that your kid don't remember nothing when they five? I'm like, make it make sense. So it like, don't make sense. I, I would imagine like, uh, that was really why I needed uh, Mish Fair was for that one was because it's like, <laughs> yeah, I couldn't, like, how do you tell that your person, like, I love you to death and I would die for you, but you are not a good mom. You're just not a good dad. Like, your parents' style just sucks. Maybe you never got equipped with those tools, but you know. That's tough because it'd be even tougher in, the, in a relationship or a marriage when you just be like, I don't like what you did with the kid that day. You know what I'm saying? Like, even if it's just like, I, I don't like how you handled this specific situation, man. Me and my wife yeah. definitely got into a couple of fights where I just kind of was like, and not in the middle, because of course you don't do it in the middle of what's going on, but just even like after a couple of conversations between her and my son and I pulled it to the side at the end and I'm like, well, so forth and so on. Next to you know, I damn sure ain't hitting that night because she mad. We, we, psh. Those mad games are great though. Like, the yeah, when, it, when, when, when you, for sure, for sure. <laughs> you make up, definitely be thorough. But, um, fuck I tell you. And that's for healthy <laughs> relationships though. That's for healthy relationships, not the toxic relationships where y'all be getting yeah. it mixed up. But, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> like, that that'd be hard just to do in one instance. So imagine telling somebody over the proliferation of their parenthood, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, like like the, yo, the the duration of it. That is just eight. you stink. Like, she's You're seven, bad at he's nine or something. It's like, yo, I'm really like forget just that one situation. My daughter told me, like, you always take mommy's side. And I said, I absolutely will. In front of y'all, we have to be a united front. I might not agree. But that's mm-hmm. a conversation for us to have and not for you to be involved in. <laughs> Facts. But yeah, like damn, that gotta be I'm telling you, like eight, nine Ooh. years old, it's like, yo, so dig this here. I'm just really not feeling the way that you're handling this, honey. <laughs> like, which is why I always tell people like, me punch. and my wife, me and my wife had so many conversations before we got married. Now you obviously can't prepare for what you don't know is gonna happen, but we had those conversations, product placement, y'all, in case you're watching on the E-Block Radio Network. Shouts out to my man. Nah, I'm saying I paid talent. I see you, baby. Um, you know we do. Um, <laughs> it's so important to have those conversations to prepare yourself as good as you possibly can for the un- for the unforeseen. Go ahead, though. Now nah, you got another one for me. Um, Another one uh, is kind of what we was talking about uh, yesterday. You know, having that conversation about lack of sexual uh, gratification. Like you just you just don't do it for me, um. Especially you know if y'all been together for hold a up. while. All right, so hold up now. Let me interject here. Are we talking 
lack of the amount of times or like you you're not doing it for me. You like not when doing we it do me. it, when we do it, it ain't okay. cut. Go ahead, man. When you, you, we, go ahead lay, you go ahead and lay that out for me. <laughs> when we <laughs> doing it, it ain't cutting it for me. Whether you gotta tell that person that they bad at head, whether you gotta tell her the yams ain't yamming, whether Ooh. you gotta tell brother man, listen, I'm not I'm not a size queen, but a uh you you ain't got enough for that favorite position you like it only it only benefits one way it don't benefit both of us brother so you you gotta throw something else in the mix if you're gonna keep going if that's your favorite position i get it that's cool that's how you blast off but it do nothing for me brother you you, you gotta hook me up somewhere in between with something different you know what i'm saying like any of that type of stuff, like oh, or even just the you know you boring, like yo, you do the same thing every time, and I'm supposed to be excited when the same thing happened every time, blood, like. And see, the problem with these situations is that's like the ego; it bruises your ego to find out, like, because how For long? Sure. You, all of these different situations is how long have you been sitting on this one? Right. See, the thing you always tell people who, like, I say whatever I want to say, it's like, yeah, you can't be in a relationship like that, though. You'll be right. out of your relationship quick, fast, in a hurry. Or you could be in a toxic joint because you learn in a relationship that it's time and place to say whatever. There's a way to deliver a message without being that harsh about it. There's Absolutely. no soft way to say, like, yo, look, like, the yams just ain't it. Or you ain't <laughs> hitting it, like, you just can't get to the spot that my old dude used to get to because you ain't situated like you was situated. <laughs> don't say my old like, dude. <laughs> Ladies, don't I mean, say my old dude. How do, dude don't, I'm don't, saying, like, how do Ladies, you, don't how do, do that. You come, how do you come back from that is what I don't, like, I damn. It's like, she tell you that, then, like. It's a tough spot gonna, to be in. Like, yeah, like, what you gonna go do? Like, uh, you gonna go watch all the, the, the X Listen, videos you want. But you got to, go, though. You got you got to you got to have that conversation with this you person gotta about grind, you gotta start grinding tape. <laughs> like you gotta you gotta get in the lab, yo. <laughs> you, you gotta get in the lab or something. You were there like Ray Lewis you with the rewinder joint in your hand. Nah, like, for, for real, for real. <laughs> like maybe, maybe you gotta see if she let you film the session so you, she can point out, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> hey, hey, the, the <laughs> back door cut. The back door oh, cut ain't there, bro. She broke the she broke the telestrator out of the Like right here. Yeah. See? <laughs> like Coach 30. Right here. See right here. <laughs> Softer than a baby's ass. You was supposed to go hard here. Okay. <laughs> Yo, man. This is the favorite coach's favorite coach is doing the game tape on us. Okay. That might, that. that might be that might be a new set with the like, like <laughs> break downs yeah. with coach. Yeah, yeah you go. Yeah, you <laughs> Oh, you know what I mean? If she's saying gonna, this, this is what it really means, right? I ain't gonna hold you, yo. Like, if you had that conversation, we probably do need to break up. We probably need to get into a bigger conversation because it's like, damn. And we're, oh, not, we're not satisfying each other. We both just like, oh my God, here we go again. Yep, here it comes from the back. Oh yeah. Oh, oh, oh yeah. Because chick, this is one thing chicks don't know. We can we we can fake it too. <laughs> Absolutely. Like, hey man, I've had some joints where I went, oh yeah, I'm done. Mm, absolutely <laughs> especially especially the boys still hitting with condoms on oh easy easy money that's an easy fake if you still hit with a condom well that's an easy fake all you gotta do is sit there and grunt and then snatch it off like you know what I'm saying <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah hey, man shout out to never using a yondam again <laughs> me and my wife just celebrated eight years. Shout out to my wife. Damn. Yeah, that's a rough one. Uh, my my, la- my my next joint I will give you is um, I don't like your folks. Like me and your dad, just like we don't mix. Like me and your brother, me and your mom, or like you and my mom. Like how we broach that su- subject. Because, like, you could not like a cousin or two. You only going to see them right. at the cookout or, you know. Uncle this function. person, uncle that person. Yeah. Hey, I mean, we could just, hey, what's up, uncle? Keep moving to the other side of the room. Moms and, like, brothers and sisters or, like, nieces and nephews, like, the folks that's going to be at all the situations, like a random Saturday at crib, might be there on Tuesday doing homework together or, like. Yeah, core Ken folk, man. Like, how you broach that subject? Because 
it's a thin line. It's a tricky situation where you, because then you make it a, you got to pick me or them type job. And that's your mom or that's your dad. Yeah, no, like, bro, bro, when I tell you that was my life at one point, like I spoke about it lightly because, of course, you know, we're trying to be respectful. I spoke about it lightly on the podcast. Don't need no um, who's hitting those buttons. Uh, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? You know, I definitely talked about the problems that it, that can happen with in-laws because, like you said, bro, f- folks attached to their family. This is the family you grew up with. This is family you, you love. You know, their idiosyncrasies. You even know the parts about them that you don't like, but you tolerate. And that's cool for you. That don't mean your spouse got to feel the same way about it. That don't mean your long-term boyfriend got to be the same way about it. Like, we all know Uncle Sam like to come over and do that. Hey, but I don't play like that. You know what I'm saying? Like, mm-hmm. I don't play that hard hitting the arm thing where he trying to test me to see if I'm tough because he want to know his niece is with a protector. Bro, you hit me like that again. We squabbling for real. You know what I'm saying? I know and all your so, nephews and, and, and your brothers is used to dealing that with that with you, but you hit me like that again. We squabbling, you know. Your your mom like to say whatever comments she like to make when we get our kids dressed. All right, I get you believe in this and you believe in that, but you wasn't no fashionista, man. I need you to be quiet. This is what I put on my kids. As long as it's clean and it match, leave us alone. The whole thing about them situations too are my cousin grabbed me like. I'm talking uh, kiss the bride type of, oh, damn, you get your first turnaround. Damn, congratulations. He grabbed me about the second nigga and said, congratulations. You want your marriage to work? You keep niggas out of your business. Niggas includes everybody. Because, yes, your mom, my mom has the best, your best interests at heart. But the statement there is they have your best interests at heart. They don't yes. have our best interests at heart. And... When you make these certain comments and all that, I tell people, I, I only talk parenting with my wife. You can have your opinion, and that's cool. Everybody has one. My four-year-old has opinions. I, You know, who cares? Um, <clears throat> You can feel however you want to feel about whatever it is that we're doing, and that's cool. When you then verbalize that and bring that to us, and then I tell you, I only talk parenting with my wife. I don't need to explain to you why I'm doing whatever it is with my wife. Because mm-hmm. <laughs> you're not my wife. And that's across the board for everybody. The problem mm-hmm. comes in those situations where you don't draw that line, where people will allow just because it's your mom or your dad. And you, if you know me, I'll tell niggas all the time, I'm a mama's boy and proud of it. You will never shame me about being a mama's boy. She can have both lungs. She can have some knee cartilage. She can have whatever <laughs> she ever needs in her life. Because I know when I came in 87, I blew up everything she had going on. Okay. <laughs> So if ever she needs anything, if she needs me to just pick her up off the damn floor, let's strap up. Let's go, mom. I draw the line here at my wife because you get to make one choice in your life, your husband or your wife. Everybody else is just given to you. Aunts, cousins, you get to pick your friends, but everything else is just given to you. You just inherit these people. And you can't put that on the other person because it's going to be a certain amount of having to deal with it when you chose to be with this guy or this girl to have to deal with that uncle, that cousin, or that father-in-law, mother-in-law, whatever it is. But right. we got to, again, we got to pose this united front when it's like, yo, so look, man, I've tried and I've tried. I've tried don't mean you came, sat there with your face broke up, didn't communicate or talk to no damn body. That's not you trying. That's just you being <laughs> like, yeah. Yeah, you gotta have situations where, like you said, I don't catch you with the bomb. Hey, oh, let me holler at you real quick. <laughs> this is what you you need to address that from the rip before you even told Facts. her, before you even told him, because the aunt that smacked you on the butt, and he was like, "Yo, but look, see, I don't." But see, that be the <laughs> problem too, bro. That be the problem too, right? Because that's 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 my, uh, I guess, confrontation style, right? If you did something to me before I go to anybody else about what you did, I like to approach it with you immediately and first. The problem is, right, with certain people, the way they rock with their family, you approach it with them first, and then they get offended. Like, you should have came to me and let me handle it. But if you are not in the business of handling it, then I can't wait around to come tell you for you to pussyfoot around about it. Like, I've seen one boy, right? I ain't going to use no names. But I've seen one homie. 
his his sister in law mad disrespectful, mad disrespectful, bro. Like she say any and everything, and the problem is she grew up saying any and everything to her sister and to her mom. So now that husband done came along, she thinks she could say any and everything to him. But the way he came up, we don't do that, especially not with our family. We 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 try to uplift our family. We try to do right by our family. So the fact that you cool with her talking crazy to you, that's that's something I can't stop. But you're not supposed to let her talk crazy to me, but that's the problem. You're comfortable with her behavior. So when I come to you, you're not going to really do too much about it. You might say, all right, all right, stop, stop, stop. That's just how Relax. she is, type Jones. That's just, yeah. there we go. That's just how she is. And now if I handle it with her directly, she pop off and be like, I don't even like your haircut. That's cool. I don't like your mitt. I, I could get a different haircut. Your mitt is stuck the way it is. <laughs> You know what I'm saying? Now, all of a sudden, I'm the bad guy. <laughs> you feel me? Like, so now he got to rock with that. He got to rock with that. So dude, that's a see, tough job, man. The, the cross-sex situations be different because I always just say, like, I'm not arguing with them. I'm not, I always say, my wife will handle that. If it's a woman, if you came at me, like, on some, damn, it's like, all right, this is the second time I seen you. This is the second time you didn't pop fly. <laughs> all right. If it's the if it's the uncle, like I said, if it's me, man to man, I ain't got no problem. Hey, uncle, let me holler at you. Facts. Now we talking your auntie. All right, look, you gotta holler at her because this is a no go, and you know that this is a no go. You shouldn't have me in this situation interacting with this type of person, knowing that that's not a that's a. This is what we were talking about with the potling situation. This is why we've been doing all the cross promotional episodes, is so that everybody knows where the line is at with you. Yep. And this one comes in pop and fly and think that's how we play. Yeah, but he ain't been. I'm not raised like that. That ain't how we play. That ain't how we talk. So like, right. don't you don't play it. You don't play the way y'all play in house outside the house. Exactly. I'm out from, from outside the house. So you gotta. You need to talk to her and let her know this is not what we're doing right here because you're allowing her. It's disrespect whether you justifying it because it's your sister or your brother, but it's disrespect. And in any situation, I don't care who it is, my wife is never to be disrespected. <laughs> oh God. My wife is never to be talked to in a certain manner without me stepping into that. Now, oh, it should God. be vice versa, though, for your husband that you should step in there and say, like, yo, look, he ain't me, so you can't go there with this. Like, again, mm -hmm. that's us. We have to pose that united front, but those things all come from us. Again, communicating, talking to each other, yeah, setting those Asian. boundaries with each other to let us know, yo, well, yeah, we gonna have to, because like I said, these are the people that you like have to deal with. This ain't the cousin right. from Atlanta who made or came up for this, that, or whatever, like who I'm never probably gonna see again. I might see twice, three times. This is the right. mother who's gonna be at the crib on Tuesday or Wednesday or whatever. But you, know, um, you see your church on Sundays. <laughs> I'm saying like our kids go to the same school. I pick them up some days. You pick them up some exactly. days. Exactly. Like, all of them type of situations. Yeah, all right, uh, you got another one for me before we wrap this one up and switch it on to the next subject. Um, what was the third one? Because I think the family might have been in that. Um, oh, 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 oh. This one is definitely sad but controversial and, and still has to be had in some situations. Um, the toughest conversation has to be about accountability for yourself. Um, like you you did something that was out of pocket, whether it was cheating, whether it was, you know, uh, uh, financial infidelity. You know what I'm saying? Um, you know what I'm saying? Something something that you know impacts that person before they impact everybody else. That's a tough conversation for a lot of people because you have to be, you have to be vulnerable in that situation, right? You have to be humble and you have to be vulnerable. And that's not stuff that everybody's good at being. Because you have to be willing to understand that whatever you confess to this person, whatever you confess to your spouse or your significant other, this could really be it. Like they actually don't have to like forgive you in this moment and be willing to move on with you. They could really say it's a rat. And you have to come to terms with that as you're bringing this to the table that you don't have. Like if you've done something egregious, you have to know that like I don't have a right to come at this person. You know, I don't have a right to expect anything from them. That's you telling them because 
they deserve to not walk around in the fog thinking everything's sweet when it ain't. But that ain't you easy know, for everybody you, to do. I mean, you know how the women are. Everything be cool until it just ain't one day. <laughs> you feel me? <laughs> um, I'm trying to. I was trying to think here if I should go with this last one. Uh, and I drop the bomb on him. Drop the bomb on him. Flex. I ain't gonna do it. Uh, oh. just gonna leave it right there. What we call that is a tease in the business. Okay. <laughs> what we're gonna do now, though, is switch it up and go to the. Next segment of the show, which is sponsored by Custom Hustle, that is at Custom Hustle World on Instagram, it's Custom Hustle Co on Twitter. For those watching again on the eBlock Radio Network, these are the hey. sunglasses. Yes, we didn't got hair on you now. Custom Hustle hey. sunglasses are available. You know what I'm saying right now they're available. Custom Hustle sunglasses, Custom Hustle Co on Twitter, Custom Hustle uh, World on Instagram. And today we have on the CH3s, the red and black editions. You know what I'm saying? Hype on the back of those. Yours don't have to say hype unless you just really like me that much. But um, <laughs> custom jerseys, jackets, sweatsuits, track suits, uh, sweats, the sweat shorts, the collar shirts, uh, the pocketbooks, uh, you know, everything's a hustle. You know, we got everything over there for you at Custom Hustle World. We own the outfit. You know what I'm saying? What you got on your feet is what we asking niggas now. <laughs> so now, Nah, we having a little pre-show conversation. We talked okay. about TV, and we talked about my man Arthur Spooner. <laughs> Facts. I need your favorite Arthur Spooner quote. Oh, I quote man. scene. Give me, give me one of your favorite Arthur Spooner situations. King of Queens. For those who don't know, if you don't know. Right. Like that was that was the, <laughs> that was Ben Stiller's dad who played with Jerry. Um, for the for those who want to look that up. Um, damn that menacing redhead. Uh, trying to think. Well, my favorite scene. It might have been the blackmail John. It might have been one of the blackmail Johns where he had Doug blackmail because you know he knew whatever Doug was doing. When he uh, had the knee John, he was uh when he had the, the knee John. And he was faking he, like he, he was, was hurt. Yeah. He was faking <laughs> like he was hurt, but he knew what was wrong with he knew Doug was capping, so he had Doug, you know what I mean, in the vice yeah. grip. Tell her I want liver and onions. <laughs> there we go. There we go. The way he was calling him all episode, Douglas, Douglas, just had him That's on the right. string to the point where he was about to tap out. Bro, like, that joint just seems so really relatable. That's why it was hilarious, though. I think that's one of the first ones that come to mind. Father-in-law like Arthur would be hard to deal with. <laughs> <laughs> Might have to cap him. I ain't going to lie. <laughs> what are Drop you him most- off on the docks. What are you most looking forward to with the live show, with the Piling Live Show, August the 4th? Tickets on sale now. Shows this week, y'all. Get those tickets now. Sure, what are sure. you most looking forward to? 245 Man Street, 230. Be there. Um, what I'm most looking forward to is two things. Um, interacting with y'all, being able to kind of bounce call, bounce off y'all, you know what I'm saying, um, and just be able to flow with things, but definitely getting the chance to interact with the audience, man. Like, we are coming from like different sets of audiences and they all going to be in one place. So, you know, getting to interact with the people who watch Sonny, getting to interact with the people who watch you, the people who watch Dana, the people who watch Mr. Know-it-all, you know what I mean? The people who watch Tone, like all these different people, bro, like getting to interact with them when they have their questions or they have their comments. I'm very much looking forward to interacting with y'all. I ain't going to lie to y'all. That's going to be fun as hell. Copy that. Now, last drink that we're going to ask you. Back in your backsliding days, we're not talking about now, you know, married man. For sure, for sure. Long, 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 long time ago. Long, long time ago. In fact, long, shout long, out long to time. my man, Mr. know it all He would say, I don't even think I was legal at this point. <laughs> <laughs> Real talk. Hey, young me with the nuts. You got something coming over. What's the go-to dish that you're going with? The go-to dish, you said? Go to dish, dish. What you, mix, dish? What you mixing up? She's coming over. What you gonna throw? Oh, in? You gonna air fry these twelve chicken fingers real quick? Cause you was a young boy, or you know what oh, <laughs> bro, I was a. So the problem is, like I said, for a certain young period, I was a menace. I wasn't feeding them. Like you got to eat before you get here. Like what? what you know why you came here? Like oh, I'm on more Sean Lynch type like stuff. You know, you know what I'm here. <laughs> you know why I'm here. Like. <laughs> You know why you here. You know what you came for. Like, you know what I mean? Like, yeah. You was on some Jada kiss? For real, for if you was a girlfriend, maybe I got got you on the little corner store platter of your choice. 
But if you wasn't that, like, shorty, what you mean you hungry? <laughs> you hungry for some meat? Yeah. I got Chickens, you. you better holler at Purdue. <laughs> <laughs> Damn, my man Nas said, I got you on five fingers from the corner store if I liked you. Yeah, man, if you my girl, I got you. Whatever you need around the way, I got you. I order and have it hot. But if you not my girl, sorry, baby. This isn't get to know hype, it's get to know Nas, so I won't have any comments about the way I was handling situations. (laughs) Um, Last segment of the show. This one is what do we need to know? Sponsored by H2H Cleaning. We're doing roofing, plumbing, flooring, HVAC, cleanups, cleanouts, uh, upholstery, uh, whatever you need. We hustling, remodeling. We can make all of that stuff happen. Well, deck work, need a tree cut, trimmed, all that. We got all of that for you. Uh, septic tanks, we are not handling on the plumbing situations. Just, we need a little snake situation in the house. Some light, we take care of you. But if you got a septic in the ground, we can't mess with you. And, um, <laughs> Mm-hmm. That is over at H2H Cleaning only. Uh, that's only on Instagram. So, you know, we're here to help. Just tell us how we can help. Nah, what do we need to know? What y'all need to know is, first of all, the proper way to spell life be life in L I F E B, the letter by self life in L I F I N G. Y'all can find us, as I said before, on Instagram, on Facebook, um, and on YouTube. We doing a lot of live streaming lately. That's what y'all definitely need to know. Normally, the episodes are pre-recorded and they drop every Saturday, every other Saturday, excuse me, in the morning, usually, like by 11, 12 at the latest. But now with the show coming on, doing all these collabs, I'm trying to get people to get that interaction started early, get them to look forward to the other people who's going to be on stage with me. So every collab I'm going to do going forward is going to be live streamed, all right? You're going to be able to find it on YouTube at Life Be Life In. And I was trying to get it on Facebook at Life Be Life In, but for some odd reason, that's acting a little weird. So you can find Nye Charles, N I, last name Charles, like Barkley or Ray for that matter. Um, and you will be able to find the live streams. I'll definitely let y'all guys know ahead of time. I'll put out a post ahead of time so y'all know to look forward to these live streams. But jump in that chat, interact with the guests, interact with me and Big Misha. Let's get things going, going towards this live show, man. Let's get the energy cooked up already. One thing I do want to say before we close this one out, I want to salute you and commend you. Me and you did a live, me, you, and shouts out to sports for you. Uh, John, we Thanks. did the live on the dunk contest. And um, when we looked at Thanks. the drums, like, damn, these numbers was kind of all right. Like, we, maybe we should start doing these joints a little more often. Right. You know how life be life. And you know what my, you know what my regular job situation is. I've been caught up. It's the summer. Be busy. Um, but you got on it and you mm-hmm. went on it and staying on it. So let me say that we talked about that. One joint I always tell niggas conversations without execution is just us talking. So right. salute to you for taking care of that and jumping on that like me and you had talked about. That was an off mic situation. But right. I like to give a nigga his flowers while you can smell them. If you're doing something that it. I like, I'm gonna you know what I'm saying highlight that and let you know about that. I appreciate um, it. Shouts to sports for you, man. We appreciate y'all from the left coast. Yes, sir. That's my folks out there. Shouts out to Mark. Shouts out to Nine Nine Gorilla. Also, you know what I'm saying, in case y'all need me beats anything, you give my man Nine Nine Gorilla on the West Coast. He make that happen. All right, y'all. That's episode one forty six. Again, the show is this week. The tickets can still be purchased. We got a couple of them left, just for you and your twelve folks that you wanted to bring. You know what I'm saying, and even if you out of town and you just want to support the situation, we appreciate you hitting the button. We appreciate you buying the ticket, whether you come or you didn't come. We want you to come. But you know what I'm saying if you're out on the West Coast or down south awesome. or wherever the hell you're out, you know what I'm saying I don't know. We want you, we want you to come. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I'm saying we appreciate y'all hitting hitting the button and buying those tickets. And thank you all for listening to episode 146. Shouts out to my man Nutmeg. Nah, we are out. I am hype. That's H Y M P E. It's hype. It's not hype. I'm not geeked up. <laughs>